I want to do a short video on judgment. Jesus in John 9, 39 through 41, he said, For judgment am I come into the world, that they which see not may see, and that they which see might be made blind. Uh, and of the Pharisees which were with him, heard these words, said unto him, are we blind also? Jesus said unto them, If you were blind, you should have had no sin. But now you say we see, therefore your sin remains. And there's such a significance in that statement because it has to do with what the Lord himself taught Paul when he wrote in... Uh, Romans 14, 22 and 23, when he said, you know, blessed is the one who is not condemned in that thing which he approves of, for whatsoever is not of faith is sin. And we need to see that, as Romans ten seventeen says, that faith comes by hearing, but hearing comes by the word of God. And we need to understand uh what is it, uh, uh, Colossians chapter 2, where he says, He who works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law, or does he do it by the hearing of faith? So, I mean, we need to understand <clears throat> what Jesus said here in John chapter 9, and what Paul wrote concerning whatsoever is not a faith of sin, because like like Peter said in uh, 1 Peter 3, 20 and 21, when he's speaking of Noah and eight souls being saved by water and any type of baptism, which does now save us, not the washing away of the filth of the flesh, but the matter of a clear conscience towards God, which baptism does wash away the filth of the flesh. The writer of Hebrews describes it in chapter 10, verse 22, you know, having our bodies washed with pure uh, water and our conscience, our minds sprinkled from an evil conscience. You know, uh, it's like he said in uh, Titus 1.15, to the pure all things are pure, but to the defiled and unbelieving nothing is pure. I mean, because faith has been perverted. You know, so we really need to understand, he says, when when they said, are we blind also? He said, if you were blind, you should have had no sin, but now you say, we see, therefore your sin remains. I mean, we really need to understand that. I mean, it goes back to where it's written that God resists the proud, but gives grace or his favor to the humble. You know, lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge God, and he shall direct your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil, whereas in uh, 3, 5. And in 16, 6, he says, by mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. You know, by fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. I mean, it is really... I mean, we need to understand what faith is because that is what we're, we're saved by faith through God's unmerited favor. But it's not because, you know, people use grace as an excuse for sin, but it's our power over sin because it is through the body of Christ that we've died to the law that held us bondage to sin because it was the law that was sin's strength. Uh, 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty six. You know, that's why he said in Romans 7, 6, you know, having died to what held us, that we might serve God in newness of spirit and not the oldness of the letter. As he says in uh, 2 Corinthians 3, 6, for the, he has made us able ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the spirit, the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Well, we need to understand, you know, as he said in Romans 8, 14, those that are led by the spirit of God are the ones born of God. 
verse 13, he says, we live by the, after the flesh, we will die. But if we, through the Holy Spirit, put to death the deeds of the body, we shall live. You know, and those led by the Spirit of God are the ones born of God. That's why he says in Galatians 5, 16, I say then walk in the Spirit, and you will not fulfill or carry out the evil desires of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against, or envies against the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit envies against the flesh, and the two are contrary, so we cannot do what we will. But those that are led of the Spirit are under no law. They're not under no condemnation. That's why he says in Romans 8, 1, you know, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. I mean, we need to see the revelation of the mystery of the gospel that Paul was trying to convey to everyone that he proclaimed the gospel to. I mean, it was the principles. Because he told Timothy, if he continued in those principles that he taught him, which are in his letters, all of his letters, that he... That, you know, he would he would come to know the truth. But some are ever learning, as he said in Second Timothy 3, 7, and never able to come to the knowledge, full discernment of the truth, the conscious awareness of the truth. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. John 14, 6. The writer of Hebrews in, uh, <clears throat> what is it, 10, 26, says, you know, if we sin, if we willfully sin after we've come to or received the knowledge or full discernment of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sin, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment. You know, we need to understand if 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 we live after the flesh, it's death, as he said in Romans chapter eight. You know, but if we live after the spirit, it's life and peace. You know, so. And, and if you don't have the Holy Spirit bearing witness with your spirit, you're not his. In Romans 8, 16, his spirit bears witness with our spirit. You know, it's not a guessing game or, well, I made a confession. And I tell you what, if you haven't been baptized into Jesus Christ and into his death, he does not dwell in you because Romans 8, 9, he says, but you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so, be that the Spirit of God dwells in you. If anyone has not the Spirit of Christ, he's none of his. And in verse 10, he said, In Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but our spirit is alive because of righteousness. There is only one way that we put the body to death, and that's through the faith that we have that God raised Jesus from the dead, and that we are willing to confess him, Lord, meaning to surrender our will, the will of our flesh, to him. You know? I mean, that's the faith, you know, and we enter it through water baptism into Jesus Christ and not a trinity. There's only one name given under heaven whereby we must be saved, even as Peter in Acts 4.12 said, and on the day of Pentecost said to the 3,000 Jews that were added to their number that day, he's, when they were cut to the heart by his preaching from the prophet Joel. He, they, they said, what must we do? He said, repent every one of you and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sin, and you shall receive the promise of the Holy Spirit. I mean, to know him is eternal life, John seventeen three. To know him is eternal life. That they might know you, the one true God, and Jesus whom you sent. And as he says in uh, 1 Corinthians 16, 17, 6, 17, that he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit. As he said in Romans 7, 4, you know, consider yourselves dead to the law, that you might be married to another. I mean, this goes back to the lame man that he healed in chapter 5 of John by the pool of Bethesda, you know, so came to the Jews to observe the righteousness of the law and observe the Sabbath day. And later Jesus finding him in the temple says, look, you're made whole. Go and sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. That's talking about that holy, that unclean spirit that Jesus delivered him from and healed him from his physical ailment. But then he put himself back underneath the weak and beggarly elements of the world by putting himself back underneath the law. 
because Paul in first second Corinthians 3 said describes the law as the ministration of death and condemnation you know the ministration of the new covenant in Jesus Christ is the ministration of righteousness the ministration of the Holy Spirit the ministration of righteousness not of sin he delivered us you know and people are proclaiming a different Jesus today you know and I'm gonna end it there I'm gonna end it there you know we need to we need to see that putting ourselves back underneath the weak and beggarly elements of the world by putting ourselves back underneath the regulations of the law as Paul described in Galatians chapter 4 you know he wasn't talking about pagan stuff being put back underneath the weak and beggarly elements of the world no that's why he used the weak, the the lame man by the pool of Bethesda. He put himself back underneath the weak and beggarly elements of the world to observe the righteousness which is by the law instead of the righteousness which is through the faith of Jesus Christ. Because we got to see Jesus as the prophet like unto Moses that God, Jehovah our God, said that he would raise up another prophet from among their brethren like unto him. And he told Moses... Him shall they hear in all that he shall speak, for he shall speak all that I command him, for I will put my words in his mouth. As Jesus said, I can do nothing of myself, but what I see the Father do, those things I do. What I hear the Father say, those things I say. He was proclaiming the commandments of Jehovah our God. We aren't striving to become righteous. He has made us righteous. He has sanctified us. He has cleansed us. If we entered into him and by being buried with him in baptism into his death, putting to death the will of the flesh, believing with our whole heart that God raised him from the dead. You know, so... Amen.